Was your marriage, Nick? Are you asking me if I killed my wife? Man of my dreams. This man of mine may kill me. What about my son, Nick? This man may kill me. In her own words, this man may truly kill me. You ever hear the expression, the simplest answer is often the correct one? Actually... Congratulations. I am, I got it, I got to get it for you. Not you, home girl from Kansas City, went to KU, University of Kansas, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Yeah. Yes, yes, no, job well done. Now Thank switch you. over to you. Man, oh. you were incredible. Love the performance. I just, I, no, I love the nuances. I love how you found the rhythm. I love what you put yourself through to gain the weight, lose the weight, gain the weight, and then just deliver. Outstanding. Oh, that's very nice. I mean, yeah, we were, well, <laughs> you know, you think how the hell am I going to pull this off? You know, when you get when you get a part like that, and then if it, I mean, if it hadn't been Fincher that you thought would, you know, you could totally trust with a character like that, you know, I knew, and I think yeah. Gillian knew that, you know, you thought whatever, whoever she probably thought whoever this Brit is, at least we got David. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the guy, the guy, the guy, yeah, he'll make sure he'll make sure she doesn't. So what about you? Do. Because you got to do the impossible. Because like, you wrote a fantastic book but you also got to do the screenplay. Yeah. How did you pull that off? You know, it was exciting. I mean, when the book was optioned and it was going to become a movie, I was, you know, I only I can write the screenplay. It has to be me. It has to be me. And then they were like, okay, write it. And I was like, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> be right. careful what you ask for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a complicated sort of thing to do to figure out. It's very different from writing a novel. Um, but for me, it was so much fun to kind of, I mean, I'm someone who likes to fiddle with my manuscript until they yank it from my hands and send it to press. So to get to revisit it again and take it apart and, and turn it into this other, you know, this new creature, this movie was really fun for me. It was fun. I can't keep my hands off Nick and Amy. I like <laughs> I love those stunts. <laughs> yeah, talk about the, the overall theme because it, it, it sort of like just brings relationships to a, a different viewpoint. It, it puts them under a microscope. Yes. It puts marriage under a microscope. And, you know, it's this idea of in this narcissistic yeah. world we live in, how performance has kind of become a totally accepted part of courtship and dating and marriage. And then, you know, and that's OK. It can be fun. You know, you can try on another self in order to sort of win your mate. And you can maybe be the a sort of improved version of yourself or the other person. But then at a certain point, it becomes unsustainable. And it's what happens then, you know, when you decide to sort of show who you really are and you know what happens if your other half doesn't like you anymore I mean that's the you know that's maybe a bit I don't know that's too simplistic I don't know but that's the that's what interested me and it's the idea that Nick and Amy, you know Nick and Amy they're sort of when well, Amy's definitely a type A personality who sort of wants to you know get the performance out of everybody and then you know when she feels that Nick's getting lazy in the relationship well, your hands are far too delicate for real scrimshaw work. And I happen to be a charter subscriber to Middling Warlord Weekly, so I recognize you. I'm gonna go with C. And you? Who are you? I'm the guy to save you from all this awesomeness. When there are days on the set when you feel like you don't quite have it and you know you've been on a roll, what do you go to to sort of like get yourself back into it, to punch back up? Oh, that's a, that's a good question because sometimes you know it'll, it'll it won't just be on a day. It'll be you're shooting a scene and and you, it's oh, it's all about sort of managing your adrenaline and all the stuff that courses through your body. And sometimes you just feel you slump and you think, how the hell am I going to kind of gear back up again? And and you have to, you know, sometimes it's like a sh you have to have a milkshake or you have to go for a, you know, you have to go and get some fresh air. You have to kind of you you sort of think, what is it? Is it caffeine? Is it sugar? Is it food? Yeah. What is it? To, <gasps> right. And, and for you as the writer, like uh, people have come at you with a little bit of criticism. How do you defend them off? Because, because of your style of writing, it, it's so realistic, and you take people to places that they know exist, but they don't often want to explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've I've always said from the very beginning, my stories are not for everyone. You know, I I have. Uh, I don't write, you know, stories about a hero's journey. I don't write stories, you know, that are going to be uplifting and teach you how to live your life. You know, if, you, if you're trying to look for, you know, a friend in a book, you might not find, you know, the, the friends uh, in my book. Like, I, my goal is very different, which is to look at the, you know, 
at human people and how they actually really work, good people and bad people, and good people doing bad things and bad people doing good things, and, and the whole big mess of human existence. Um, and, you know, it's dark. It's a, 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 it's a, a dark look very often. So, um, you know, I think if, if you want that sort of ride that you're, you're like the my stories, and if not, you know, you, you might not. I think the thing, and the thing is about Gideon's books is that you start off thinking you're reading a story about them, you know, these people. And then somehow in every single book she writes, you suddenly have this moment of identification. She makes, and then you feel sort of unsettled because you're reading about these people who have admirable qualities, awful qualities, and and you kind of, you know, you get them and you identify with them. So that's I think why you leave everybody so unsettled and. Well, it was a fantastic piece of work, and congratulations, you do Kansas City very, 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 very well. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Appreciate heading it. back in a Thank couple you. weeks for oh, a little. Really. You're watching Black Tree on TV, only on Soul of the South.